Hi friends, welcome to the Fiber Bound podcast. This is episode 24. It is Sunday the 16th of June and I'm coming to you from Adelaide, Australia where I live with my husband, our two sons, our dog Shorty and our six chickens. And I have so much to share with you today. I have been doing a lot of knitting over that time and I've also had a chance to do a little bit of sewing as well which feels like a little while ago now but it has been a long time since I've sat down for a full podcast episode. So I hope you've got your beverage of choice with you. I have a coffee today in my, whoops you can't even see it, in my summer sock camp mug one of the OG Summer Sock Camp mugs. Summer Sock Camp is ho hosted by Kay Litton of the Crazy Sock Lady and I've been participating in it since it started a few years ago now. Maybe three, maybe four years ago, I'm not quite sure. But Summer Sock Camp started at the end of May and I think it runs through to August sometime. Feel free to check out the Crazy Sock Lady podcast for all of the details of that knit along because it is hosted by her and I love joining in every year and I love pulling out my summer sock camp mugs to drink out of. <laughs> I don't think I've introduced myself. My name is Alexandra or Ali and you can also find me on Ravelry as Ali Pay and I am on Instagram as Fiberbound. Everything will be linked for you down below and I'll also link to my project pages and anything else that I talk about, um, shops that I mention, makers that I mention, uh, YouTube channels that I talk about as well. So check out the description box below and you will find the links to all of that information there. I am hosting a year-long knit along this year and I've been a terrible host. <laughs> I am hosting the Use Your Sock Yarn Mal 2024 and I was supposed to draw winners at the end of the first quarter but I have not recorded an episode I don't think maybe I've recorded one and I wasn't very organized for that one but I have had a chance to collate all of the entries now I have them in a spreadsheet I have not drawn them yet but I will draw them after this episode and I've gathered information on every single post from the first quarter and have popped it into a spreadsheet and we'll use number random number generator to draw prizes. Um, I'm so impressed with the participation of this um, knit along or make along given that I've not been very good at promoting it. I am so grateful to you all for deciding to join me in trying to use your sock yarn and I've talked about this before feel free to refer to previous episodes I think uh, the first episode and the second episode of this year definitely went to a, into a lot of detail about this. The aim of this knit along is that you use your sock yarn. If you use a skein of sock yarn or you complete a project in a month, um, calendar month, then you're eligible for the major prize draw, but I will be drawing prizes every quarter for pattern prizes outside of that. So for the first quarter, I will be drawing a number of winners who will win a pattern prize of their choice from Ravelry. The patterns can be up to the value of $10 US or $15 Australian and all I ask is that you send me your Ravelry ID or Ravelry um, name <laughs> by email to fiberboundpodcast at gmail.com. I'll pop that on the screen for you as well and down into the description bar. And if you can email me your details and the pattern that you would like, I will be able to gift that to you. When we get to the major prize drawings, there'll be two of those this year. There's one at the end of June and then there'll be one at the end of December. And for those, there is a web form to enter any projects, any projects that you finish in a calendar month using your sock yarn. They don't have to be socks. You can knit a hat, you can knit a shawl, you can knit whatever you like, but as long as this project is completed within the calendar month and you have used sock yarn for it, and then sock yarn definition is also quite broad, uh, that can be uh, anything with nylon, anything you would knit socks with, so it doesn't have to be fingering weight sock yarn, it could be DK weight sock yarn, anything that you would knit socks with realistically. Uh, if you finish projects within the calendar month, you're eligible for an entry, 
uh, via the Google form that I will also link down below. And I will have some physical prizes from those drawings that I will announce in July and in January. If I'm organized, it'll be July and January. If it's a little later, I'm sorry. Life just tends to get in the way a little bit. <laughs> But I will pop the winners on the screen now and congratulations to you. Please get in contact with me and I look forward to gifting the first quarter prizes once I hear from you and continuing to see all of the entries come through. It is really fun to see what you're making with your sock yarn. I have a few finished objects to share with you today and I have been very busy knitting away and doing a little bit of sewing as well over this last, these last few months so I can't wait to share those with you. Some of the finished objects have been gifted so I will just talk briefly about them and show you some footage if I took that. <laughs> I think I did so that you can see what those things were. And I also have some works in progress and some acquisitions to share with you as well. So I'm going to try to go through things relatively quickly. I don't want to rush through it too much, but I also don't want this to be too long for me to edit. <laughs> so let's see if I can get this done within the next hour. <laughs> Fingers crossed. So on to the finished objects. My first finished object for this episode is the cardigan that I am wearing, the big elephant in the room. I am wearing the Radvent cardigan by Amber O'Brien and I knit this in Louis and Lola yarn which was my advent calendar for 2023 which I've actually left the leftovers over there. Just bear with me for a second. So for this project I used Louis and Lola yarn and these are the leftovers of that advent. It was a gingerbread house themed advent and it was amazing. Here is Louis and Lola's logo. And this advent was on the Merino Yak Nylon Sock Base, which had uh, 400 meters or 437 yards in 100 grams. And it's a 70% superwash merino, 20% yak, 10% nylon yarn. And it was amazing. This is the main color that I used for the cuffs and the hem and the button band and it just tied all the colorways in so beautifully. I'll try to put some b-roll footage up for you so you can see this in its glory. Um, I haven't actually taken that yet so well, let's see how good that is. Um, it makes it a bit easier than standing up. This pattern was so much fun to knit. Uh, you basically start at the cuff, and this is the cuff that I started on, and then you knit on the bias, is it on the bias? I think it's on the bias. You knit your sleeve and then the body, and then you cast on the second cuff, and then you knit the second sleeve and the body, and then you seam them with Kitchener stitch at the back. This was such a a potato chip in it and I really enjoyed it. You just wanted to move on to the next color and the next color and it was just very satisfying to do that. And now I used around 10 to 11 grams max of each colorway. I used all 24 minis in this advent and I actually used day one twice. So day, it, the pattern is written for, <laughs> I haven't done this for a while. <laughs> The pattern is written for 25 minis and I have 24 plus I had the main skein. So I decided to repeat the first color again and it actually worked out really well to repeat it along the back um, where the seam ended up being. Uh, just the way the colors and the tones fell together, I felt like it was a nice transition between the one side and the second side. So that was really fun to work, work out and fun to knit. Now I did not gauge swatch for this project officially but I did check my gauge after knitting the cuff and the first stripe and I washed and blocked that so maybe I did gauge swatch but I didn't gauge swatch for the knitting flat part which is the body sort of from here. I'm very bad at explaining this. 
you knit in the round all the way up the sleeve and then you cast on some extra stitches down here and uh, that was a fun technique which Amber O'Brien provides a great tutorial for and then you're knitting flat for the rest of the body. Now my gauge changed when I got to the body and it was the row gauge that really changed. <laughs> <laughs> which meant that it is a little more uh, fitted than maybe the pattern is intended to be. I knit the size, uh, things I haven't told you yet, I think I knit the size 2. I'll pop it on the screen if that's not correct. And I think I sized down the needle. I think it's written for a 4mm or a US 6. I'm pretty sure I knit it on a 3 0.75 millimeter or a US 5. Again, if that's not correct, I'll pop it on the screen. But um, definitely notice that the gauge got tighter as I started knitting flat. Um, so it is a little bit more snug than it was maybe intended to be around the body, but the actual length of the sleeves is perfect and I'm really happy with how it turned out. Now, once you complete all of the stripes and you seam it together, you then pick up and knit the um, hem of the cardigan and I decided to knit that a bit longer than the pattern suggested just because I wanted a little bit of extra length to it and I figured uh, why not I really like this yarn it's really pretty <laughs> and once you complete the hem you then pick up and knit the actually you have some stitches on hold but you pick up along the back um, and along the ribbing and you knit the button band. Now I again decided to knit the button band a little bit wider than written in pattern. Uh, I can't remember what it's actually written to be but I did add maybe half an inch, maybe an inch, I can't remember now. Um, and basically because I did feel like the body could have been a little bit wider, this just gave me a little bit more body. I guess and I'm really happy with how that turned out. The button band actually does have three buttonholes in it and I did knit those per pattern but I have not attached any buttons to this because I'm not intending to actually close it up. <laughs> once I tried it on, once I've been wearing it, I have no intention of adding the buttons but if I change my mind one day the buttonholes are there. <laughs> so I consider this finished well and truly I have been wearing it quite a bit I wore it um, for Mother's Day with my sons which was wonderful we went for a walk through the botanic gardens and it was a perfect layering piece for that activity it was a coolish autumn day here I wore it last week when I went to worldwide knit in public day as well and so that was really nice to be able to take it out in the wild with some knitters too amazing project if you have an advent calendar that you're not quite sure what to do with and you love the colors of it brilliant choice for an advent project i think it would even work really well with some leftovers or, or scrap yarns um, and if even if you have a 12 day advent i think you could make it work as well if you added another full full skein <laughs> Um, I don't think that it's necessary that you use 24 advent, 24 minis for this particular project, just given that um, you're not using that much yarn. Like these initial sections, they used less than 5 grams each. Uh, I may have, I think I put it in my project notes, um, how much yarn or how many grams I used for each stripe. So feel free to check out my project page, it is linked for you down below and that will um, give you some indication of how much yarn it uses. I think it ended up weighing just under 300 grams in total, pretty sure that's right. But again, just noting that I do have a slightly tighter gauge on the body and if I'd maybe uh, realised that I would have sized up my needle when I went to knit flat, which is quite fun, funny because normally I feel like I'm tired, tighter in the round, but I got very tight on the flat. I think I was so conscious of trying to maintain the consistency on the pearl side that I just knit it super tight. Um, but yeah, that it was it's fine. I'm really happy with how it worked out. 
I just noticed that my battery is really flat though so I'm gonna have to plug this in and come back to you <laughs> that's it for this one I'm really happy with this project and I can see more of these in my future I think I can imagine myself knitting another one because it was so fun yeah I don't knit things twice quite often so we'll see if that happens there's so many things to knit <laughs> Okay, hopefully that's all right. I think my camera moved as I was changing or plugging the battery in, so <laughs> hopefully that's okay. Now my second finished object is actually sewing. So I haven't done any sewing in a couple of years before I made this particular project, but it is knitting related. So I had the opportunity to test sew a project bag pattern for Patil Knits uh, back in at the end of March. I think I did it over the Easter long weekend. <laughs> so that was a little while ago. Patil Knits put out a call for test sewers for their new uh, marshmallow drawstring bag pattern. And this is the pattern there, or at least this is the test pattern that I used. And I love Patil Knits bags. They are so beautifully made. They're usually quilted and just real pretty fabrics um, so I signed up and was accepted to sew this pattern or test this pattern out which was very exciting for me so I've actually got a project in it which I'll talk about during the works in progress section but here is my project bag I'm so happy with it now it's obviously open right now it is drawstring closes up like so so this is the marshmallow bag, marshmallow drawstring bag by Patil Knits. Uh, the pattern has now been released, so um, I will link that down below for you. And I followed it pretty much exactly as written. Um, first time I got to do some quilting ever. And I'm really happy with the tips and the tricks that um, were provided in the pattern. It's got a lovely uh, handle here. Surprisingly or not surprisingly I chose pink because pink <laughs> It's amazing for both the handle and the drawstrings and I'll just quickly show you what I pulled the project out so it's not in the way and that's the inside of the bag there there are three pockets and she also had in the pattern to put in a, a lobster clasp I think it was but I couldn't find a lobster clasp and other testers were putting in d-rings so I did that as well I kind of wish I'd secured it I didn't think of that but it's fine so there's a d-ring in there for stitch markers or progress keepers or for any other purpose that you may wish and um, yeah I love how this turned out it's one of my favorite project bags if I do say so myself I love this fabric now I bought this fabric from spotlight actually I bought all of the fabric from spotlight and the accessories um, and the quilting uh, the wadding now one thing that I did notice um, when I was shopping for wadding I couldn't find iron-on wadding I think it's pronounced wadding I'm not sure um, so that's the bag closed up without anything in it as well so it's pretty structured because my wadding is quite thick um, compared to the type that um, Patil Knits used in the um, instructional videos but I'm still really happy with how it turned out it's um, got a lot of structure it's very stable and I love it it's so great um, highly recommend you check out that pattern if you're interested in sewing any bags for yourself because they are amazing I do have other bags of hers that I've purchased in this style actually one right behind me so this is one that she made <laughs> that I purchased from her a couple of years ago I think it's basically the same yeah it's got the three pockets inside I've got stuff in it but yeah so this is mine and this is the professionals so I'm pretty happy with that <laughs> I feel like it worked out quite nicely 
Oh yeah, and she has, um, here we go, she's got a clasp in here. And I actually don't even know if I saw these ones at the store. I definitely got something different, but I'm really happy with that. So yeah, that is my second finished object for this episode. My next finished object are a pair of socks. And if you joined me for the week of knitting vlog that I posted a few weeks ago, a month or so ago now, you would have seen me finish these. So I'll quickly talk about them. Um, they were a really fun quick knit and basically a pair of socks. I knit these socks in Finch Yarns DK weight sock yarn and I used a contrast color for the cuffs, toes and heels. And then the main color is called the something eel, the late eel. And I really like how they turned out. I purchased this yarn in at Fiber Feast and I think I may have shown it on my previous episode. So I'm really happy that I've knit something up from that festival already. My husband is very excited to get these finally because they've been sitting in my basket waiting for me to record <laughs> for a, a little while now. So these will be going to him after I've recorded this episode. Now, when I knit my husband's DK weight socks, I cast on a 48 stitch sock and I usually cast on a 3.25 millimeter needle and I think I did these ones. I can't remember now. Can't remember if I did these ones on a nine inch circular or on my Addy Flexi. They're not called that. Addy Trios, Addy Crazy Trios. I feel like I may have done these on the nine inch circs, but I could be wrong. I followed the Crazy Sock Ladies DK Weight Vanilla Sock pattern. It's a free pattern on Ravelry and um, yeah, I just, I don't even have to look at it anymore. I basically know the stitch count that I need to start with um, and yeah, it's, it's pretty straightforward uh, per my usual sock recipe. So yeah very enjoyable very mindless knit my husband loves a long leg as you can see here which is why i added the contrast yarn for the um, toes heels and cuffs because it meant that that 100 gram ball went really far and gave him a nice long leg that he will really enjoy now i'm pretty sure i did around 50 rounds for the leg uh, so i think it's around 14 rounds for the cuff which is per pattern around 50 rounds for the leg and then I usually do around 60 rounds for his foot. He has quite large feet. Um, yeah, so that's his DK weight socks. They were a joy to knit. Um, so that will be fun that they can go to him now. And my final finished object for today that I can show you, I will talk about a couple more. My final finished object today uh, was housed in this beautiful project bag and again if you joined me for the week of making you would have seen me start this. This is the Sophie scarf. <laughs> I love seeing people's photos of it looking like a croissant. So that's how I rolled it up in here. I haven't actually taken any finished object photos of it yet. But this is the Sophie scarf. I talked about this at length during my week of making. But let's just touch on some basics here. I love this. It is actually, I wore this last weekend. And feel like it is the perfect size. Lovely drape. And I actually modified the pattern just a little bit. So let's just leave it on there for now. Maybe I'll leave it on for the episode. We'll see how warm I get. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, simple as that. Now I made the large size and I used the Regia Cashmere 4-ply. And the color is 
I called something to do with wine, but I can't remember what. The number on here is 85. But there is a name when I put it in Ravelry. I just can't remember what it is right now. So that's the yarn I used. I have around 12 or 13 grams left of the ball. This was a full 100 gram ball when I started. Now my modifications for this is that I ended up holding the four ply yarn or fingering weight ply, fingering weight yarn <laughs> double instead of holding it with mohair which meant that my gauge was quite la quite a bit larger. And I also sized up my needles to make sure I still had drape. Um, so I think the pattern is written for a 3.5 millimeter needle. I ended up using a 4.5 millimeter needle for this, I think, to make sure that I still had some lovely drape and it wasn't too stiff and dense. So I did follow the pattern, otherwise exactly as written. I made the large size which ended up obviously being a little bit larger than expected because of the gauge difference and the needle change but I'm really happy with how it turned out I'm really happy that I used almost the whole ball of yarn um, and it just feels so lovely and warm even though it's quite a small delicate piece to be honest and I'm really really happy with it uh, it's an easy pattern to remember there are increases every it's a paid for pattern I can't tell you how many but every certain row number there are increases when you're starting it and then you get to the halfway point and then there are decreases to get you back to the small edge again uh, there is an i-cord edge on the side here on both sides so that finishes it off really nicely and makes it look quite tidy and uh, yeah I marked all of my increase rows with a light bulb stitch marker I think I have a photo of that that I can pop here to show you while it was a work in progress um, and that just meant that I was consistently making the increases as increases on the correct row each time. And yeah, follow the pattern as written. Otherwise, really nothing else to say, I don't think. Apart from the fact that it was a really quick knit. Really enjoyable knit. I think I may have spent a maximum of about four different knitting sessions working on this, maybe five different knitting sessions working on this. And it felt like it just flew off the needles and it grew really fast too. But I think that's got a lot to do with the fact that I held the yarn double. Although, I mean, I made the same size. So the number of rows is exactly the same as it would be even if I'd made it with the recommended gauge. But yeah, I'm really happy with how it turned out. I am actually going to take it off. It is a little bit warm in here. But yeah, it is. it was a joy to knit. It's a joy to wear. I did wear it last week and really loved wearing it. And yeah, the Sophie scarf. My first one. Possibly not my last because it was really fun to knit. Another good example of a project that would work well for the Use Your Sock Yarn Mail. If you've got some sock yarn in stash that is just too precious to put on your feet and you want to put it out in public, <laughs> um, Sophie Scarf will use less than one skein. And if you hold it double, you'll use the majority of that skein. So yeah, there's an idea and a beautiful project. Now the last thing that I wanted to talk about, or the last three things I have been gifted but I did just want to mention them because I had a lot of fun making these so the first item that has been gifted is a scarf that I made for my nine-year-old niece for her birthday uh, and it is in her school colors because she has recently started playing soccer for her, for her school I wanted her to have something cozy for those chilly mornings. It is winter here, so I decided to knit her a scarf. And I wanted it to be something relatively quick, easy, and effective. And so I chose Fisherman's Rib, <laughs> which I actually found really easy. I found, uh, I, I did some research on different ways of knitting Fisherman's Rib flat. And I found 
the best way that I have ever seen because it was all knitting. There was no purling throughout this whole project and maybe there was one room where there was a bit of purl but through the majority of this project it was either knit one or knit one below and both sides and it's reversible and it turned out so good. I have put copious notes on my project page for this one because I want to remember how I did it um, and if you're interested in knitting a scarf in fisherman's rib that is really easy uh, this is possibly a good option for you as well so if you wanted me to write this up as a pattern I'm happy to do that but I would definitely not be charging for it because it was really simple but I really enjoyed making this scarf um, I made it in three colors so I made it the, the main color is a navy now I do have some yarns here some leftovers so for the main colour, I used this uh, Marvel 8-ply, which is a DK weight yarn in navy. This is from my local Spotlight. Now the light blue that's in the pattern is the Marvel 4-ply in cloud, sorry, 8-ply in cloud. So those two, and then I have a yellow. <laughs> the final yarn that I used was this yellow um eight ply yarn that is the ball's a bit of a mess because i think this has been used for a couple of things over the years and i have a button band in here somewhere button band yarn band the yellow is marvel soft eight ply so this one's a really um soft version of that acrylic yarn and this is I think just yellow there is no color name on here it's got a color number <laughs> of 8027034 it's yellow <laughs> I don't know what kind of yellow it doesn't say on here but um, yeah so I knit the scarf with those three together and I arranged it to match her jersey so that the dominant color is the navy then the second color is the light blue and there's just a pop of the yellow throughout the scarf and i love how it turned out and she loved it too i gifted it to her last week for her birthday and she absolutely loved it she put it on straight away while she was still opening her presents and just wanted to wear it the whole time she was opening her gifts which was so heartwarming <laughs> when i finished that scarf and i had a lot of yarn left over i decided that i would knit a couple of hats and i again wanted to have uh, a similar to a fisherman's rib look but didn't really want to do fisherman's rib i wanted to knit it in brioche because i like brioche and it basically gives you the same effect but what I wanted was a two color brioche hat. So I found a pattern on Ravelry. It was the Dorian hat by Jessica Gore of the Sweater Collective. Jessica Gore is a local to me uh, yeah, pattern designer. She is actually here from Adelaide as well. So it was nice to be able to support her and I really liked this pattern. It came in a number of sizes and uh, yeah it I felt like the the way I could use the colors would work really well so I knit two of these hats I knit one for my baby niece my my the niece who is playing soccer her little sister as my gauge swatch <laughs> and then I knit one for the birthday girl herself as well and so again I used the navy as the main color and then I used the light blue as the contrast color and I decided that I would just put a pop of the yellow into a pom-pom. The pattern doesn't call for a pom-pom. I just decided to make one of those. And I used one of these pom-pom looms that I've had in my stash for a few years and had never used. And I used the largest one and it worked. They worked out really well. I had a lot of fun making these. So it's a very simple little device. Um, if you can get your hands on one of these I mean there are other pom-pom makers out there but this one you basically wrap the yarn around that's the tail and then you just um, wrap the yarn around the edge there eventually you cut it or you tie it you cut it or you cut it you tie it I can't remember now 
there are instructions on the back you tie it then you cut it <laughs> and uh, then you just trim your pom-pom down to a nice tidy size so very simple little gadget there in the past I've, I've made many pom-poms in the past but I've always used um, toilet paper rolls uh, but this this I've, I've had this for a long time and I found it so I thought I may as well try it out and it worked really really well so those were gifted last weekend uh, to my niece and to her little sister or well, both nieces um, my younger niece my, the baby niece was still asleep she's not a baby anymore she's two now she's a big girl but she was sleeping when uh, my niece was opening her presents so I haven't really seen her in her hat but my older niece graciously tried it all on for me and I can get a few photos that I'm not sure if I'll be able to share here um, I'll see if I can obscure her face but uh, yeah really happy with those projects really quick easy knits um, yeah very enjoyable so if you have someone in your life you're looking <laughs> to give them a sport themed accessory um, I highly recommend that Dorian hat pattern if you've got a couple of colors you want to work with it was a real pleasure to knit and knit up so quickly I think I knit the sec the first hat took me a few days because I was working on other things in the meantime as well but the second hat I did in about a day so maybe a day and a half so yeah it was really great I'm really happy with how they worked out those are all of my finished objects that was a lot today and I'm probably forgetting something because I gifted a bunch of other stuff too but I feel like I may have shown them in the last episode now on to works in progress let's talk about works in progress I only have three to share with you today they're the three that I've been working on the last well since finishing everything else there are others too but I've not really put much if any progress into any of those so let's focus on the ones that have had progress now the first one that I will show you is a test knit it is a test knit for my friend Jane of mindful making it is the gum nut cardigan uh, and I have been a terrible tester <laughs> this pattern has now been released and it is amazing but I hurt my hand while I was knitting it so it slowed me down a little bit but that's okay we're getting there it's reprioritized now that the gift knits are out of the way as well and I am loving it and I am so close to being done now I will show you the gum nut cardigan my progress on it in a second but first I'll show you the amazing yarn this project is knit holding a fingering weight and a mohair together or it can also be knit on the DK weight yarn as well and now I chose to do it with the fingering weight and mohair combination because I had some amazing things in stash well I had amazing fingering weight in stash the mohairs a lovely addition but obviously it's the hand dyed yarn that is the star of the show <laughs> so I am knitting this in this beautiful yarn by Yarn Trader now Yarn Trader is my local yarn store and this is quite old stash I purchased this for a test knit a few years ago that I decided didn't really work for that pattern um, and have been just holding out for something amazing to use this for and this was the winner now this yarn is called English or this colorway is called English Rose this is a 75% superwash merino 25% nylon there are 20 sorry 425 meters or 460 yards per 100 grams and it is the English Rose colorway and it is stunning and I am holding this together with Drops Kid Silk Mohair. I think this is the cream colorway. Again, I think it just gives me a number on the label, 01. It's the 01 colorway, which I'm pretty sure is cream. But yeah, these two together are making an amazing fabric. Now I thought about showing you my swatch or I could just show you the actual garment but it is quite bulky now so I will pull the swatch out. This is the amazing swatch and that's how it looks together and I love it. 
it is so good the halo is amazing the drape is amazing very very happy with this I did, did forget to mention because it is the gum nut cardigan there are there are some gum nut details in there and the yarn that I'm using for that is actually some leftover Louis and Lola yarn and I can't remember the colorway but the tags in there this is left over from my shawlography from a few years ago and this one is in the colorway Bronte or Bronte Bronte so good I love Louie and Lola obviously <laughs> so let's show you the actual progress now I have about four balls attached to this at the moment so let's make sure that I don't drop everything Here it is so far. Ah, I love it. Now this is quite hard to show and talk about, but you start at the neckline with a twisted rib. And then you do some short rows. I think there were short rows up there. Yes, <laughs> there were definitely short rows up there. And then you come down to this gum nut detail. That's where I'm holding the Louis and Lola yarn to get this lovely effect. The button band is knit while you're knitting the body of this and it's knit flat all the way down. So it's a twisted rib button band. And I am loving this so much. Um, I finished the body this week and I ended up doing the hem a little bit longer than written in pattern. Everything else is following the pattern exactly. I have not amended anything else. But I adjusted this a little bit because I think my row gauge was a bit out. And I needed to put a final button hole in. Which meant that the button band needed to be a little bit longer to be able to get down there. So there's the final button hole there. But yeah, so good. Now, the other night I picked up both sleeves because it's just nice to have them ready to go, which is why I've got multiple balls attached now. So I've got this sleeve picked up and I've knit the first couple of rounds of it. And I've got a ball of mohair and a small ball of um, the first skein that I had held onto so I could um, join them up nicely make sure there was no uh, visible difference with the um, skeins changing because this is hand dyed yarn um, i was alternating at the changeover mark so i don't alternate all the way throughout but usually when i've got about 30 grams i start alternating um, in the next ball in for a little while maybe 10 rows or so and then I will drop that original ball and start with the next one so this is what's left of this is half of what's left of that original ball that I started the project with the other half I actually split that in half and used half of it on one sleeve and half on the other sleeve so that you've got the same ball of yarn continuing on from the yoke down into the sleeve and then I'm uh, joining in the next ball that was actually used for the body. So if there is variation in the hand dyed yarn, it's not stark um, through the sleeve. It sort of follows the same, similar transition to how it would have been throughout the body. So this sleeve, I've actually attached the second ball. I've already knit one of the little nuggets. <laughs> knit one of the nuggets and attach the second little ball that was left over from the second skein that I used and once I get down to about five grams of this I will add in the final ball that was used for the body which is this one here so that will also go across both sleeves so yeah it's progressing really nicely and I feel like now that I'm on the sleeve and um, well into that process I will have this done in no time 
So I tried it on just before recording this and I think I'll try this side on and can't really get my arm through the other side. And I think I've got just over half the sleeve to go, maybe a little bit more than that. But I've popped some uh, progress keepers there, or sorry, stitch markers. So I'm marking every decrease round and I've got a pile of stitch markers hanging off there. Hopefully that's focusing okay. And I know exactly how many decreases I need to get done. Though I will measure as I go in case my row gauge is a little bit different and make adjustments if I need to down the track. And my aim is to replicate whatever I do on one side to the other side. But I just love this so much. I did need to size down some needle sizes to get gauge for this one. So I think it's written for a four millimeter needle or a US six again. And I think I went down to a 3.5 millimeter, which is a US four to knit the body on. And that gave me the gauge in the pattern. Um, obviously as you knit I feel like my gauge shifts a little bit when you're knitting at different times of day when you're knitting in different different situations your gauge can change depending on various factors and I feel like my gauge definitely did change a little bit throughout the pattern but it seems to be fitting quite nicely and I'm really really happy with how it's working out so that is the gum nut cardigan there is also a gum nut tee that uh, Jane has released a couple of years ago that if you don't want to knit flat that's an alternative for you as well it is written for short sleeve I believe but you could always modify it to be a long sleeve you would just need to figure out if you wanted to have some decreases in those sleeves or not uh, but yeah that has been a really fun project and it has been my constant project I was knitting on this during my week of making as well and I think at that point I was just about to split for the sleeves I can't really remember now time is constantly moving I've got two more projects to share with you and these will be pretty quick to share because uh, they're both socks so my first work in pro sock work in progress that I want to share with you is in this beautiful yarn which has gone a little bit floppy because I'm almost done with them by Rainbow and Sprinkles. Now I don't know what the colorway name of this is. This is quite deep stash uh, from maybe two or three years ago. Uh, but I know that I went through a phase of ordering uh, their mystery skeins their monthly mystery skeins for a little while there and i feel like this was maybe the november 2021 or 2022 mystery skein i think i tried to look through my order history uh, but it didn't have a name i'm really happy with this one it's a beautiful little um yellow and pink combination with a bit of speckling through it as well. Rainbow and Sprinkles are an Australian based dyer. I think they're in Perth and beautiful self-striping yarns and really colorful, vibrant colorways if um, you enjoy that, which for socks, I love that. <laughs> so this is the first sock that I knit up and it's self-striping. And the second sock is almost done. I think I have a stripe and a toe left to go but I got sidetracked. So I cast these on uh, when I was doing the Relay for Life for the Cancer Council, which I talked about in my uh, week of making vlog. And I did, I think, maybe half a cuff during that event. Uh, I just really wanted to have a cast on so I could have something to work on while I walked the track. But realistically, um, I only did about three or four laps with the sock in hand. Um, yeah, I didn't get much knitting time over that event. So it's sort of been my travel knitting, my uh, work lunch break knitting, that sort of thing since then. And this is a fingering weight yarn. So I knit my fingering weight yarn socks on a 2.25 millimeter needle by Chowgu normally. Uh, these I think were done on 
nine inch circulars based on how when I cast them on yeah these were done on a nine inch circular needle um, except when I got to the heels and then I would have used um, maybe another nine inch circular because I did have two of these in the thing before but I might have used a 32 inch fixed circular for the heel flap and gusset just because there's a lot more stitches on the needle at that time to maneuver around a nine inch circular needle so I tend to usually have another set of needles in my bag when I'm doing nine inch socks so these are the nine inch circular needles there and then this is the 32 inch cord so yep 56 stitch socks for myself I think I did around 60 rounds for the leg actually I can tell you because I have stitch markers so I use stitch markers here just to count the rounds and I pop one every 10 rounds and I do that um, after seeing Kay from the crazy sock lady do this because she does that on all her socks and I feel like it's a really good way of seeing progress and also making sure that one sock matches the other although when I get to the second sock if it's a self-striping sock I don't bother putting any progress keepers on there except for maybe the heel start um, basically because I can use the stripes as my guide because I try to match them up and these match pretty well you can tell there that they are pretty on the money in terms of their match matchy matchiness so yeah I am um, I'm just using the stripe colors to determine when I need to start my toe and it looks to me like I just need another yellow and a pink stripe and then I'll be ready to start my toe I think because I think I'm about there <laughs> so these will be done very shortly now I am keeping these in my project bag by the knitting den, den shop by the knitting dentist um, Krista isn't making bags at the moment but I adore the ones that I have from her so this is the knitting den shop on Etsy uh, I think the shop is closed at the moment but if they open up that will I'll let you know um yeah love this bag it's just such a convenient size for my work bag uh, love it so that is my first sock work in progress and my second sock work in progress i'm actually holding in this little bag by sandy by the lakeside it's one of her i don't remember what she calls these it sort of ties up bento bag I don't think it's bento I can't remember what it is um, but yeah this is by Sandy by the lakeside there's her logo there little scissors and I love the interior of this bag and I basically picked it because it kind of matches the yarn that's inside this is a new acquisition and a new cast on so I purchased this when I was at the yarn store last weekend for Worldwide Knit and Public Day and it is the West Yorkshire Spinners Colour Lab Sock Yarn in DK weight and this colourway is called Pop. This is 75% British wool, 25% nylon and the fun thing about this is that there are 150 grams in one of these balls which means it's perfect for my husband who likes his long socks <laughs> I will not run out of yarn so that's very exciting and another new purchase here with this project is that I purchased some bamboo chow goo needles to try out as well so here's the start of my sock I've done the cuff and I've almost finished the leg and I'll be starting the heel flap shortly as well now here I am counting my every 10 rounds on this sock as well for DK weight socks for my husband I usually go around 50 rounds which uh, is similar to the finished object I shared earlier but these are turning out pretty vibrant pretty cool my husband hasn't seen this yarn yet I assume he'll like it and yeah I felt like I had to cast it on as soon as I bought it I actually cast it on the day that I bought it home which is why the other ones didn't get finished yet <laughs> 
because I started these ones. Now I did purchase the nine inch circulars from Chow Gu in bamboo to give them a try. I've noticed they're very, very sharp compared to what I feel like my um, metal Chow Gu nine inch circulars are. So um, that's been interesting. I also purchased a 32 inch cord in the same size. So this is a 3.25 millimeter or a US three needle. And this is on the 32 inch cord, which is my preferred length of cord for fixed circulars for sock knitting. Um, I purchased this because when I get to the heel flap, this will just be easier to um, do on a longer needle. But I did actually try them as well, and they're not as sharp. They're a lot blunter. I don't know if you can see the difference there. But they definitely don't feel as sharp as the 9-inch circulars do, which I thought was a bit interesting. I quite, quite like the sharpness of these ones. But yeah, giving these a try, I just figure it's nice to have an alternative option. I do have some um, wooden needles from Nitpicks in my stash, but they don't come in these sizes, like sock needle sizes. So I thought I'd give it a go, see how I like knitting on bamboos. And yeah, I think I like it. I, I'm indifferent at this point in time. <laughs> I think I would have to knit a row on my metal ones and then a row on this to, in the same yarn preferably to see if I feel a difference and that might be a fun fun experiment to try yeah but these are these are fun first sock is on its way um, I'm knitting these predominantly on the bus so I have decided over the last month or so to two months maybe to catch the bus one day a week to work. Um, saves on running costs on the car for at least one day a week. And yeah, this is my bus knitting at the moment. So that's when I get progress on this project. Those are all the projects that I've worked on the last couple of months um, since I've officially talked to you all. And I am itching to cast on new things, but I really want to finish my cardigan and um, maybe pick up another old whip. I'm really keen to get my my geo gradient back out of hibernation. I think I've put a row or two on it since I saw you last but it's really not worth showing. <laughs> so uh, maybe I'll show it to you in the next episode. Accountability posts maybe. So let's get on to some acquisitions. Now I've got a few small acquisitions. I haven't gone too crazy. I did purchase some new wool or new acrylic yarn for the hat and the scarf that I showed you before so that was all done through spotlight but other than that the purchases have been quite minor sorry about the sounds actually there's not been all purchases either there's been some gifts let's go through purchases first so purchase wise my April yarn ball arrived after I would have recorded last this has been shown on other channels, uh, so there's no spoiler here. It's now June and this is April's yarn. April was called Life is Short, Eat the Donut. It's the plush sock base and 8515 Superwash Merino Nylon. And there are 437 yards to 100 grams in this yarn. It's a lovely neutral with a mild speckle in there. So not quite sure what I'll do with that yet, but I was intrigued by the the subtleness of this yarn actually I thought it might be nice even in a shawl as a neutral to complement some other brighter colors we'll see how we go it's quite a pretty colorway though I think I've seen Kay knit this one up and it's quite quite lovely um, would be really nice in a pattern sock and uh, now my other purchase is another ball of this color lab sock yarn now this one is in the color blues again 150 gram ball and there are 337 meters or 367 yards to 150 grams and this one looks quite interesting too I'm not sure if these will be for my husband or for one of my sons it's definitely color a colorway that my younger son would enjoy um, but I don't know that he needs 150 grams for a pair of socks. He's not as fussy about his socks being super long like my husband is. 
excuse my stomach if you can hear that <laughs> uh, coffee's not cutting it so yeah that is another acquisition and then my final acquisition from last weekend are these little stitch stoppers from yarn trader I am loving using these. I don't know if I didn't mention it on my cardigan. I'm actually using them to hold the sleeve stitches secure as I'm working on one sleeve so that they don't fall off. Or if I'm putting it in aside, I'm also putting them, putting a, some stitch stoppers on there because they're just really secure. And make sure my stitches don't go falling off the needles. So that was another, lo another lovely purchase. And lucky last, in terms of purchases, I purchased the Grand Shetland Adventure Knits by Mary Jane Mucklestone and Gudrun Johnson. And the reason why I purchased this is that I had the pleasure of attending MJ Mucklestone's class last week um, at my local yarn. Last week? Two weeks ago now at my local yarn store and she wrote me a note in my book she autographed it for me so that was exciting and there is a pattern in here that I'm very keen to cast on there's a few actually but the first one because I have yarn for it are some gloves so I'm looking at casting on the snow treasure gloves by MJ Mucklestone in some yarn that I purchased for the class itself. So I purchased, in, in advance of the class, I purchased some Jamison and Smith yarn. The class I attended was um, looking at interaction of color. So that was really fun. And I've got five colorways there. I think I only need four for this pattern, which is great because I think I don't like one of the colors in that um, set. And I'm, I'm hoping to be able to cast those gloves on and get them knit up in those colours and try some of the techniques we learnt as well. So that's it for the purchases, but I do have two more acquisitions, one of which was, well they're both kind of gifts I guess. The first one is my Desert Vista Dye Works yarn from participating in the knit along last year. The light's changed, it's gotten dark in here, sorry about that. Uh, so this is the colorway Desert in Bloom, which is a one of a kind, well one of a kind. It's a, it's a colorway that was um, designed for the people who completed 12 months of socks with Desert Vista Dye Works yarn in 2023. There were 75 of us who did it and this is gained 53 of 75. And it's Desert in Bloom and it's got a mini with it which is fun so yeah that's exciting i was eligible for it for knitting well we're using 12 skeins of yarn last year and the final acquisition is this beautiful skein of yarn by ruby and roses this is the colorway willow on the soft rose base and hopefully that color is coming through okay I just realized the lights changed so much it is 85 Superwash Merino, 15% nylon, 437 yards to 100 grams. And this was gifted to me last week by my dear friend Marina from uh, Handmade Koala. It is so pretty. She knows me so well. So she actually did give me something else a few weeks ago as well. So I have um, a sweater that she has almost fully knit. All I have to do is add some sleeves to it that I will talk about once I add those sleeves but watch this space it is a beauty and she's knit most of it <laughs> but I will share it once um, I've had a chance to work on it too amazing friend so that is all the knitting all the acquisitions for this episode and life stuff is just that it's been busy here um, I don't even know why it's been busy. Life is just lifey. I organized my linen cupboard last weekend instead of recording as an example, and it feels so good to have that done. <laughs> but I've been meaning to record episodes pretty much every weekend since I published my week of knitting vlog. 
and it's been one thing after another if it's not housework responsibilities it's plans outside of the house or just life or sometimes I'm just not feeling very well <laughs> so I apologize for being a sporadic podcaster I have been enjoying watching some of my friends or many of my friends podcasts even though I've not been uploading myself um, I'll just mention a couple here that I've been really enjoying I think a new one that everyone should check out that I'm really enjoying is the Mindful Melbourne Maker podcast. Uh, Kath is Melbourne based and she has re released I think five episodes now. I watched her last one yesterday and I love her content. She is very fast with her knitting. She's amazing. Um, knits some beautiful pieces, a nice variety of different projects and her color choice is just so beautiful. She actually inspired me to knit this cardigan. Uh, she got the advent calendar the year before I got mine and when I saw Kath's finished object I was like right I know exactly what I'm making with my advent from Louis and Lola this year so highly recommend that you check out Kath's channel she is phenomenal and she's just starting out so head over there and give her some love say let her know I sent you <laughs> I think she'd appreciate knowing where people are coming from. So amazing podcast to check out another lovely Australian maker. Uh, other than that, I've been watching a lot of AKA Nora Knits. I think that's what it's called. <laughs> um, really enjoying Nora's content. She is American based. I'm not quite sure which part of America at this point, but I really enjoy her content. It's just so inspiring she's only been knitting for about a year and she is coming out with some amazing garment projects uh, and she's so good at talking about them I feel like she leaves me for dust <laughs> in her explanation of what she's doing there um, but yeah really enjoy watching her podcast and then there's the usuals I never miss an episode of the crazy sock lady I never miss an episode of knit all the yarn podcast I'm loving the Rose Opal Knits channel. I've been watching them every week and really enjoying their content. Um, they've really gotten into cross stitch. Well, Erica's always been into cross stitch, but Daphne's now also <laughs> cross stitching quite a bit. So it's fun to sort of see how um, the crafts shift for us. Like, um, I have some sewing this week, which I haven't had in a couple of years. Uh, I sometimes cross stitch, but it's rare. <laughs> I think I did some early this year, but I've not shared it here because it was so minor. So yeah, it's really fun to be able to catch up with friends far, close and far online uh, and see what you're all up to. So I really do love being part of this community and I really am grateful that you're here sharing with me as well and spending your valuable time here. If you like this content, if you want to see more, Feel free to uh, leave me a comment below, like, subscribe, do all the things. Um, it really does help the channel out and I really appreciate uh, you taking the time to spend your time with me as well. And I might just wrap it up there because otherwise I'm just going to ramble on and on. And time wise, we are probably way over an hour well recording time is over an hour we'll see what I edit out <laughs> thank you so much for joining me I am so grateful to you for being here I hope it's given you a chance to work on your projects or to do some housework around the house <laughs> I know I watch a lot of episodes while I'm doing housework as well so yeah thank you so much and I'll see you on the next episode oh and the winners don't forget to contact me as well I can't wait to hear from you take care bye